Okay, welcome guys. This is episode 10 of Experience This. I'm excited for this one. We're going to talk about all things social, social platforms, influencer platforms, video, marketing. We're going to really talk about the industry view of it, less so the tactical and the operational stuff. So we have Marika joining us as a guest, but first I just want to introduce um, Laurie, Laurie Timoney. Hey everyone, glad to be here for episode 10. We're now into double digits. Big day here. Uh, yeah, looking forward to this episode as well. And it's great to have America joining us today. So thanks for jumping on, America. Um, Bruce, I've known you forever, and I still don't know if it's Bruce Rosard or Rosard or what, what would an interesting person be? You know, it's interesting. It's, it's been pronounced all kinds of ways. I go with Rosard. Um, and uh, Bruce Rosard, I'm one of the co founders of Arrival and a co host of Experience This. That, is gaining momentum and, and thanks to Von Mack, it will look beautiful very soon. Excellent. I'm Marika. Hi everybody, I'm Marika, I'm with Von Mack Agency. Um, I love that we talked about your last name, uh, Bruce, because if you were in Louisiana, it would be Rosard. You would be Bruce Rosard. It'd be, uh, it's been Rosard, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I always thought it was. Um, but yeah, very happy to, to speak here today and thank you guys for inviting me. All right. I'm going to call you Bruce Rosard because I think that's how I'm going to say it. So. And besides, you know, that no, I actually like, you know, I actually like the boss since Springsteen <laughs> has always been one of my favorites and still is. Um, so you can call me that too, Christian. Yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. Um, <laughs> I was listening to an Airbnb interview with um, um, Ge Gebbia. I've forgotten his first name. Joe, is it Joe Gebbia? Anyway, he, he's the founder of Airbnb along with um, Chesky. And he said he just did some research and genealogy and he found his family back in Sicily and he found out his name is Jebia, not Gebia. So he's officially changed his name. He's been saying it wrong his whole, his whole life. But um, it, was a good, it was a good interview. I listened to that yesterday on, on a week in startups. I think it was on. But um, I, want, I want to start up with uh, Rob from Trip Hacks, which some people will know. He just wrote a, an article and he, he created a video I think every day, once a day or twice a day for 60 days, kind of an ex as an experiment. And he was posting it on um, a few socials, uh, TikTok, I think Reels, I'm not sure if it was Facebook as well. And just an interesting conclusion. He, do, you, do you have the numbers in front of you, Bruce, on how, um, what he did? Well, he, he was posting per day. And each day he was getting you know anywhere from a low of like 20,000, up to 50,000, then he was peaking at 100,000, 200,000. His biggest day was almost 500,000 views. Um, so over the course of December 1 to January 31, he had over 2 million video views um, from the work that he was doing. And I think there was, was it mostly TikTok, is that right? Uh, it was mostly TikTok, but he also was uh, using YouTube. Um, YouTube shorts, basically. Yeah. And what, was, what was he posting, Christian? Sorry? What was he posting? I think just, just sort of as a quick, he, he, he's, he's been on YouTube for a long time and he, he's, a, he's a tour guide in, in DC and he gives you the overview on, you know, this is the White House and this is how you visit and he gives you status on the ground, what's open, what's, what's new. I think he's just posting those. But the, the, his conclusion was he doesn't know if he will continue to do this. Well, what he said, and you know, maybe we should have Rob on this session. Um, in January, he tracked 62 visits to his website from two plus million video views. Are you gonna tell That's us different that? than the kind, kind of content that Justin Buzzy talks about, right? And the yeah. response, yeah. So Marika, what do you what do you think of all of this? What's the What's the conclusion here? I, I think that we have to really focus on what the value of being popular is, right? Do we want to be the most popular thing online and how does that directly give you value? Um, you know, if, if you want something through the door right away, I would never go to social ads 
I would combine social ads with, a, you know, Google search and all that stuff, as we know. Um, but, you know, TikTok is so high up in the inspiration ladder that it's it's difficult to monetize. It's definitely a nut that people have been trying to crack. And I think that this article is is a great explanation of that because it, it breaks it down into all of the specifics with numbers um, that a lot of our clients and people in the tourism world are seeing as well. It's it's fun. Some people like to dance, some people don't. You'll see huge spikes in popularity. But how long are they going to stay with you when you build that community? Are they going to stay with you for years? Are they going to keep engaging with your content? When are they actually going to make that visit? And I think we're so early on with this TikTok thing in terms of planting the seed um, that we're, you know, it's going to be, it's going to come in terms of seeing that value, um, but it's the build now. So is it worth it? I think it's, it's going to depend on if you enjoy it. And that's what I always say in terms of social. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy putting yourself out there? Because that's really what sells it. And, and he said, I think towards the end, he, he, he wasn't, he was looking at it as a chore. It started out as fun. If, if I, I don't know if you do work with, with Rob or not, but if you were, if he, if you were his marketing agency, would you recommend that he just continue to, to do this every day for, he needs to do it for five years? Is that the, is that the problem? Well, I wouldn't say every day for five years. That's, that sounds like he gave himself a whole job to do. Um, and I also wouldn't say that he should do it if it's a chore. I mean, you know, that's, we're not in this to have it be a chore. That's why we're in tourism, right? So, you know, if he already has traction and he has this great community, I would advise him to, to keep posting, definitely keep posting because you don't want to be stale. You don't want to have a dead page because then people won't come back. They'll just automatically write you off. Um, but maybe have people on his team, you know, keeping things going and maybe not as, you know, geared towards it and, you know, head to, head to the ground, um, you know, in a daily way. There's, as we know, marketing, marketing strategies are very layered, you know, they're, they're five, six, 10, 15 fold. So, um, you know, if you're going to be posting every day and watching that, that closely, that's a lot of your time in one aspect of this huge marketing mix. You know, one thing that Rob did talk about that I think is really important is he's been doing YouTube for a long time, you know, so more YouTube long form. And this experiment was short form, whether it's YouTube shorts, TikTok, I think were the two primary ones he did, could be Insta shorts, et cetera, Insta stories. You could tell us what that is all about America. And his observation is that when he puts on a YouTube, maybe that's a minute, two minutes, three minutes, he can really introduce himself, his company, the tour that he's promoting, probably have more of a CTA. Whereas when you only have 20, 30 seconds, there's not enough time to get the message out. And it seems like that's what he's saying is he's gotten a lot of likes, a lot of eyeballs, but he's not driving revenue, which of course is what this is all about. So um, we can figure out a way to put, put, you know, see what, you know, talk to him and maybe add him into uh, the show notes and people could reach out to him if they want. He might not want that. We'll see. Um, so I think there's a big difference between short and long form video, although long form has its own problems, like how long should long form be? But what I want to ask you, America, is call to action on short form. Like, how do you, that's, I, I don't know how to do that. And I've been confused as short, short video, vertical video has come out. And we talked about it so much at Arrival in Vegas. And we're going to be talking about it again in Berlin. And it's definitely a hot item. But how do you go from a 30 second video to click here to learn and book? All right. So there's, there's definitely, many ways to go about it. So I'm going to speak to TikTok first, and then I'm going to tell you where we focus our energy based on our clients. So TikTok, I love that you, you use the word drive because we have to think about how we're interacting with these apps, right? So with Facebook, with Instagram, um, even with Pinterest, you know, we're doing the driving. We are actively looking for things in our feed or we're, you know, cobbling together our feed through our likes and our behavior and our interactions. Um, TikTok's different. TikTok feeds you right? So you don't have this huge thing where you're logging in and you're, you know, it's just like dashboard like Facebook is or LinkedIn. It is feeding you the content, the short form content based off of your behavior, based off of what you interact with. It's guessing for you what you're most interested in and possibly interested in interacting with in the future because it keeps you on that app. That's why it has the most time spent on it, right? It's hard to monetize that because again, people want to relax and they want to be entertained by it. It's like a going to the theater or watching a TV. Instagram, Facebook, that's where we spend a lot of our time. 
you do have that aspect with regard to reels, with regard to the find me videos, it, you know, they'll recommend videos following that. But, you know, largely what you do is you curate your feed and you have more of a feed where you are driving, right? So what we do is we focus on two things. We focus on engagement and conversion. So when we do ads, we'll separate them and we'll do an engagement ad. And that ad is planting the seed, as we call it. And it is putting an idea in someone's head, right? So it's, you know, it's it's a little, it's a little tricky because you don't want to plant the idea of like, let's say a swamp tour in general, because there's a billion swamp tours out there. You want to plant the seed about why you were different and entertain someone and that it's something to do. So, you know, with with our targeting, we can target people all, all along the funnel, but you want to entertain them. You want to get them to stop and watch your video or something like that, but you do not ask for the sale right away. What you do is you plant the seed, right? You 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 pop in there and you entertain them very similar to TikTok. Following that, we have engagement ads. I mean, we have not engagement, forgive me, conversion ads. And that's where we ask for the sale. So we'll do conversion ads to that same group of people we're targeting, visitors, people in key feeder markets, you know, based on the city. And that's where we'll ask for the sale. And we'll give a proposition, you know, a unique selling point of value. Sometimes there's a sense of urgency, there's a promo code, there's reasoning behind it. We test short form, short form versus long form. Um, and it really depends on the client. Um, if it's a museum, long form does really well. If it's an adventure tour, it's going to be short form. Um, but, you know, we test all of that out. Um, and so following up with that, there's the third line where we retarget. So we're going to retarget people based off of their interaction with the engagement ads, based off of their interaction with the conversion ads. And if they haven't converted yet, because we'll make that a negative audience, and then we'll make that promo even stronger. So again, we're going to the TikTok base where we are driving for them. We're popping into their feed. We're making sure that we put in something that's just stunning and stops them. Um, but then we follow through with their mindset and we use things like Facebook and Instagram because it gives us all of those tools to do so. I still don't get back to my question. I'm watching a TikTok. You can't link, Bruce. You, you want to link. You can't, can't link. link. No, but I want to know how someone, how a TikTok can drive me to book. Never going to do that because they're never going to let you off the platform. Never. It's never going to do it. Well, they actually just rolled it out. Uh, well, they rolled out news two days ago that you, you can sponsor a post with a link to your profile. So that is this week. Um, we have yet to test it yet. Um, that's where you would play into Linktree and things like that. But again, that's where I think that TikTok is more for CVBs, DMOs, ideals, you know, as opposed to something that's super specific and a place to do. Um, but you can um, you can now boost a live video on TikTok. Um, so th they're developing, they're developing, but they're not there yet. So that's why, you know, okay. you don't- I'll, it's, I'll it's, drop the topic. Kind of, so it sounds like the other channels are gonna be more based on call to action and bookings. Go ahead. And, and let's, let's, let's move to that. I wanna, I wanna talk about OTAs for a second though with, with, with Laurie, but I think they've, these channels kind of have us where they want us. I, I'm not, I don't wanna be one of these conspiracy folks, but let us create all this free content, which is great, high funnel, not gonna convert. And then as soon as you want something to convert, like you just said, Marika, you're paying for the ads, whether, the, whether it's ads or retargeting. And that's only when you pay for ads that they'll let you link. And I think that's the way it's always going to be. And that's, that's great for them. And that So I wonder, well. you know, this, I just want to make a comment based on a couple of things. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about somebody who posted, you know, multiple videos on TikTok and wasn't seeing any kind of conversion out of it. Um, we're talking about, you know, that TikTok is guessing on, what your uh, interests are and what your behaviors are. And this kind of goes back to, in my head, you know, some of the basic rules of marketing, right? You, you want to convert when you market. So you look for the audience that's going to buy your product. And so I wonder if in some cases, TikTok is just too general. And so all of the work that's happening with him is going out to a fairly generalized audience that maybe isn't specific enough to what his tours are. Um, and, and not that he couldn't, you know, kind of get to that place where there's mostly travelers looking at it or people interested in that destination, of course. But I wonder if in some cases it's just too wide of an audience and 
especially if you have more of a niche product, I think it's going to be harder to find that customer on a channel like TikTok. And maybe you're better off with a channel like Instagram. And I wonder if, America, is that something, I mean, it, you know, am I, am I sort of right in thinking that maybe it's a bit of too much of a general audience or what are your thoughts on that? I agree with you. I actually, I was talking about this the other day with a client. I, I equated TikTok to back in the eighties and nineties, everybody was watching MTV. Everybody, it was, you know, my, my babysitter, it was all the time. It was, it was a thing, get, get the teens off of MTV because they were just obsessed with it. It's the same thing with TikTok. It is about being entertained. It's about being almost addicted to it. It's an entertainment platform. So if you're going to put your content out there, you have to think about it as almost a commercial or, you know, on, on a tick, you know, back in the day in MTV, it would be, it would, it's more of a billboard. It's not a super deliberate action that you're doing in this, at this stage of where TikTok is. It's, it's being entertained. So I agree with you. Yeah, I think it, it, that, that it's, it's difficult because the view, the, the views are just incredible, right? The number of people on there, the hours per day spent, and it's such an alluring place to go. And everyone, I think you go to conferences and everyone talks about it and everyone thinks they have to be doing it. Um, but maybe it's it's not for everyone. But let, let, let's talk about, um, nobody's asked me about Mr. Beast yet. I'm sure you guys are all <laughs> dying to ask questions. I, I watched the, um, I'm actually not gonna talk about this, but I did watch a, a, an interview last week with Mr. Beast from uh, Lex Fridman, who I've been obsessed with. And the, the, the thing that got me was, um, this might be completely unrelated, but it was a two hour long interview. And for those that don't know Mr. Beast, he's the number one on YouTube and he's the number one on TikTok now. His average video gets about 200 million views. And Lex Fridman, I don't know if you guys have seen him, he's, 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 he's great, but he's kind of, he's kind of boring and, and he's very focused on metrics. I just find it interesting. But he keeps drilling in and asking Mr. Beast about the metrics and about how it works and getting into this really niche conversation. And Mr. Beast, he, he, he can't handle it. He's sitting there getting all antsy. And he's like, do you think your viewers are going to enjoy this conversation? And Lex is like, yeah, it's fine. We'll just keep talking. And he, 10 minutes later, he's like, can we move on to something else? Because this is t he all he's thinking about is his viewers watching his videos and if they're going to start turning off. Because when you have 200 million viewers every minute, you might lose. Yeah. 10 million. But Christian, did you know that Mr. Beast got kicked out of the house when he told his mom he was quitting college so he could become the number one YouTuber? <laughs> I love that. Anyway, sorry to interrupt your very um, educational you know, discussion, I'm but I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, what well, is the point here? Let's go. go. I go what are you talking about? My mom's house for her and, and so that she made a mistake. But I, I, I want to the, 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 the point of that was that these these people that do well on on the channels on these social channels are only focused on their customer and they see their customer watching them and it's very it, it's also very personal when you when you're creating these videos on YouTube you're kind of talking to singular audiences but I also think we, we, we group TikTok Instagram reels Facebook YouTube we kind of group them all as a thing and like you just went through America, they're all different and you need different strategies for each one. I agree. I, I also think, you know, to, to Lori's point, it's, it gets old school. It, it gets to the basic principle of you have to know your marketing. You have to know what that nugget is and, you know, what you're there for, right? So are you there for getting followers and having a community? Because that's a whole job. You know, are you there to entertain people? Or are you there, you know, for a secondary action, you know, to, to drive somebody to do something, in which case you can't really worry about the audience that much because, you know, unless you have this huge, you know, team or, you know, a big marketing agency or something in house, it's, it's, it gets very layered, as I mentioned. So you do, you have to remember why people are there. Yeah. So Bruce, do you, do you have that video of, I want to talk about some of these other platforms. There's lots of other platforms that are coming out that look a little bit like a TikTok platform and they're trying to work in the tours and activities space. Yeah, let me give a little background on it. There's a few of these platforms out there. It's kind of just getting started. And it's basically where you have content creators, people that are also known as influencers, right? That we all heard about that have been working with brands for a long time to try to monetize. So these content creators now have a platform where they can work with experienced creators 
are people who are creating tours, activities, attractions, experiences, and providing a new funnel for the experience creators by working with these influencers or content creators, a very easy platform that provides a funnel for our experience creators and some additional revenue for the content creators. And so let me uh, demonstrate one of them that is out called Navi Savvy that has uh, really taken kind of a leading position on this. Um, hold on one second, because I started it too soon. Ten minutes while you work out how to show your screen, Bruce. Yeah, exactly. Why don't you do that? Um, it's going to be Mr. Beast. Uh, let's share screen. That's the first step. And then we will play the video. Bruce, yes. I am impressed. This was very well done. <laughs> no, it's a little slow. But anyway, so what this is showing us, right, is she's pitching to content creators, come onto my platform. And it's super easy. You're doing this anyway. So go ahead and put your videos on my platform. And then she has a way, I don't know exactly what it is, to connect it to experienced creators. And if there's a booking, provide some kind of commission. And I promise you it's not 20 plus percent like OTAs. Um, so it's a new conversion funnel that is a lot less expensive and that will be, you know, something that's definitely coming next to a, you know, to a uh, Did you up about the percentage? Surely you're not going to represent that it's cheaper in the long term. Well, I don't have the facts. Well, but, that's I, the facts, Bruce. Come on. but I would absolutely yeah. say it's cheaper. It's not, she's, it's not 20%. I mean, unless I mean, I, I think I do think that we need the facts here though. So perhaps we ought to get move away from Bruce. them on to the next show. <clears throat> um, America, you have yeah. something to say? You yeah, know the I, facts? Say, I won't say what I love about this. I don't know. I don't, I don't have facts. I have a great opinion though. I would say, um, I think that remember how we were just talking about how what is your, you know, what is your why? Why are you there? Are you there to get followers? Are you there to have an action? If these influencers are travel influencers, their why is to have this community to, you know, to have followers, you let them do that. And if you want to partner with them, then you have this great piece of content that you can use for retargeting and you can use in other platforms and you can use as a basis for, for learning what your people want to watch, you know, when you have them in Facebook, TikTok, all of them. So um, you get to focus on what you do. They get to focus on what they do and you get to optimize from it. So I love that. I, th I think it's a really cool thing. I think it really is going to be a new funnel that's going to start to come. I will find out what the percentages are and we can talk about that next time. I'm sorry, I don't know that now. But I promise you it's not 20%. Um, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. So I'm going to get back to you. Um, I think it's nice that it brings it all together, right? It brings together the influencer, the creator, and the call to action or right. way to buy. Let's just say right a now, way to buy, I'm right? This thing about influencers, and it's almost a dirty word, right? Because influencers call... DMOs or tour and activity providers or hotels and say, hey, I have 50,000 followers, so I want you to fly me down to your hotel and give me a free room for four nights, and I'll take lots of pictures and videos, and I'll post them on all my social channels. And then the hotel on the says, I don't know whether I should do that or not. It's it, it's really, and you know, America, again, I think you could probably talk to this. So the whole influencer model is a big question mark for a lot of people. This makes it a lot easier because it's a platform and if it works it works if there's bookings you pay and if there's no bookings you don't pay and it, it kind of puts everyone on an even playing field um but that's in that's in theory bruce and theory is great but let's talk about practice how, how do these platforms because there's i've seen 10 i'm sure there's a hundred of these platforms that say hey come to my platform upload your video to my platform and we'll market it there's a quite an obvious chicken and egg problem. If nobody's on that platform looking at it, I'm going to upload one video. I'm never going to go back. How how do these how do any of these platforms work in practice? How do they, you know, TripAdvisor tried to do a social network with all of their how many users have they got? You got facts on that, Bruce? I think what we've decided is we have at least two people 
that we've been talking about that should be on this show, <laughs> yeah. right? That so we need to push this to another show where we can get some answers to these questions, right? Like I don't know the answers. I don't know if you you know who knows the answers to these questions. And um, I mean, well, there's mind, an o- there's an obvious need for and for creators. And there's definitely platforms and has been out out there for have been out there for some time now where you can go and sign up and you have access to any number of different influencers. And especially if you're a bigger brand, you're already engaging in those platforms. You're already doing that. Because how the heck are you going to go out there and find your own influencer? It's really hard to do. Um, and that you want specific influencers as well, right? It's not just about the number of followers, it's who's following them. So, um, I mean, this is already happening, but I think what hasn't happened up to now is the bringing together of all the pieces of the puzzle. You know, sort of the, the, one, the people that are creating the influencer and then the way to buy the product. And I think that's the thing that when we see that happen, I feel like that's gonna be a total game changer. And maybe it's already here and we just don't really know much about these new platforms. I think it's a hard sell. I think it's a hard sell in travel. I mean, it's easier when it's toothbrushes or you're, you know, selling, you know, tangible things. But when you're selling travel, it's hard to connect an actual booking to an influencer. That's a big, big promise if that's what that is. And I'm not sure if that's what they're actually selling, but that's a tough nut to crack. And I have yet to see uh, influence influencers say they've, you know, made this many direct bookings. You know, that's, that's if they can get that moving, then this would be huge. But again, it's, it's you know, just to speak to your point, that's what types of people, where are they, you know, visiting? What is the window here, you know, of when they're going to book? You know, do they count the bookings for the next year? How, how, would they, how do they track that and how do they prove their value, especially with something so new. So I think that that's really interesting. I mean, it's it's one thing to say that you have, you know, a campground and you want to get an influencer that is a traveling, you know, RV family. Like that that can actually give you some direct bookings right away. But, you know, when you get into the big cities and you get into the, the fly and drive, it's, it's a lot further out. So I'd, I'd like to know a lot more about those logistics and those numbers as well. So, so Laurie, I was going to challenge you it would be better if I just challenged you immediately after it, then it sounds sounds more dramatic. But you said all these big brands are already doing this. Is, is that is that true? I mean, I'm sure that, you know, they, they go to their conferences and they see the TikTok thing and they produce a couple of TikToks. How many of these big brands, maybe big attractions, do you know that are that are engaging and doing it properly and actually building a brand, not, not just showing pictures of the Eiffel Tower every morning because we, you know, you can you can find a lot of pictures of the Eiffel Tower, but how many brands are creating it? A- well, I think there's definitely brands that are out there looking um, regularly looking for influencers. I mean, I've had people ask me several times, "Hey, do you know influencers for the state of New Hampshire?" Because we've got this uh, boutique property and we're trying to get you know this um, an influencer that can drive uh, business to our property in New Hampshire. Um, Hey, do you know influencers that are familiar with conservation? And, um, you know, so I do, I think that for sure there's a need for influencers. And so they're just hoping, what they're hoping for is they're hoping to get an influencer, hire them, do their own video um, with that influencer at their property or using their facility or whatever and then run that themselves, the campaign, and then watch it blow up, hopefully, because the influencer has, you know, X thousand, whatever, hundreds of thousands, et cetera, um, followers. Um, so I do think that's a hundred percent a real thing for sure. Well, and they don't uh, know where to go yeah, to get them. It, it is a hundred percent a real thing, of course. I mean, there's already people who make a career out of being influencers, yeah, otherwise known as content creators. I'm actually going to an event um, the summer put on by Wonderful, where they're bringing in lots and lots of content creators. And I'm going to run a session based on this collision between content creators and experience creators. And there will be hundreds of content creators there that, you know, for the first time, they might be exposed to this other way of making money versus, like you said, Lori, going to a DMO and saying, let me, let me push your DMO with my followers. And I might have a million if I'm a great influencer, plus give you quality, you know, quality photos and videos that you can use as well. One other just really general example 
uh, for those of you who are in Vegas, you might remember our MC, Ravi Roth. Ravi uh, runs Ravi Around the World. He is one of the largest, most influential LGBTQ influencers for travel in the world. And if you as a destination, product, whatever, want to appeal to the LGBTQ community, Ravi's your guy, right? He That's who he's influencing. And he can have a major impact on exposing different types of travel products to that community. You know, that's just one example. So, yeah. so I've, I've failed in the last half hour to mention AI, but- <laughs> Oh uh, gosh. Wait no, a second, no, Christian, no, no, no. that was, it was exactly 39 minutes in and you we did not to, say that. We have to go wow. there. And the, the, reason I wanna, the reason I do wanna mention this is we are at this age now, today when everyone works out what they can do today most people haven't worked out yet where it's unlimited content ai can now i, I i've got a, a a good a good friend of mine he he's got a few thousand videos uh, destination videos and he plugged them into um i don't think he even used zap he, he plugged them into canva he did chat gpt obviously everything starts with there created 50 posts canva created the templates and the images and then he plugged it into Hootsuite, who then started publishing them. This is today. The mechanics of that doesn't matter. This is all possible. We're going to have unlimited content very soon. We're going to go from what, whatever was posted last year, a billion, a billion pieces of content. This year is going to be 10. Next year is going to be 500 billion. There's no stopping this. We're in this loop. So my, my, my question around that is, is the individual then, the influencer, going to become the critical thing because we're going to have a million cool videos of the golden gate bridge that all look the same and there's nothing unique about them we can all do the same creation and it's all about that individual so it's all about ravi and he is the influencer it's his tiktok and he and it's his credibility which is key the fact that he's on there we, we can go to the next stage with this and say we can also create a billion ravis tomorrow but let's not go there but is, is this going to make the influence is the world ready for a billion Robbie? Yeah, is this, is this going to make the influence <laughs> even more important going forwards because they're the differentiator between a billion pieces of content and a couple of great pieces of content? I think the human element is the major source of inspiration in all wars of our team. It's the, it's the yeah. human element. It's having images with people in them, having you know the, your audience be able to envision themselves, take your tour or visit your museum or go to your city. People wanna visualize what it's what the logistics are going to be. They, they have a family, is the family gonna be safe? How big is the group gonna be? How fun will it be? Does that person look like they're actually having fun? Do they look like me? You know, That's always been the key differentiator. That's always been the heartstring pull and the emotive pull about tourism. So I, I would say maybe so, you know, you want to, you want to be pushing that out from your own brand if you're in travel, but to have those, you know, elements being pushed towards you is going to be huge. Yeah. I think that the brand is, it, it, it's interesting when you think about sort of the overall general marketing um you know you sort of look at that that makes sense for brands right it makes a lot of sense for brands to maybe consider marketing on TikTok because maybe they're not necessarily trying to drive one product or one um tour uh, maybe it's just an overall awareness thing whereas you know i think if you're especially if you're a, a small or medium operator for me it seems like you know, having those experiences where people, real live, actual people, are experiencing that that bike tour, that but and and then they can they they're going to put it on their social platforms. Then they're going to be your influencers. You know, and so to me, it almost seems like you know this your next door neighbor talking about something is going to mean a lot. At least it does to me, right? I when I when I want recommendations, I go to people that I know. Um, and, and so I feel like the brands are, you know, the influencer and the brands make a lot of sense to me, whereas the kind of individual products, um, especially in the experiences space, to me, I feel like that's all about the people that are actually experiencing it. Yeah, and if there's um, 10 billion pieces of content next year, Christian, instead of a billion, 
How are people going to find them? What channels are they going to find them on? What is going to differentiate them with that human element? Like, you know, I'd be a lot more interested in watching a, a short video of a mountain bike tour that really relates to me with people who are cool and, and interesting versus, you know, some random chat GPT mountain bike tour. Um, right. So, so, so the social platforms have to curate that. They are, That's their job, right? Is to curate that. Yeah. Well, they have to curate it, but will they curate? Let me let me give you some data that I wanted to share from some recent arrival research that is certainly relevant to this discussion. Um, one in four adults under the age of 35 are already using TikTok as their go-to source for inspiration when they're looking for experiences. One in four already using it. While Facebook is losing influence, I think we all know this in this age group, but it's not just this younger generation. One in five 35 to 54 year olds are also going to TikTok when they're looking for inspiration. Now this isn't about booking, but it's inspiration. And we all know that inspiration is part of that top of the funnel, right? Um, and despite TikTok really growing, Instagram is still the most influential when you're looking for something to do with more than 50%, 50% of under 55. So not just young people, 50, under 55, 50% are looking to Instagram for inspiration about their next travel experience. So this all, this all matters, right? It's all really matters, even if it's not direct to booking conversion like we started yeah. this discussion on. Yeah, I want to, I want to, I got a quick story I got to tell you. So I was, um, I think my daughter was 13 a few years ago. We were down in LA. We used to go to LA quite a bit. LA is actually a great city. If you, once you get to know it, I used to hate LA. Once you get to know it, it's it's great. So many cool parts. But she used to help me sort of find cool parts of LA because she was on YouTube and Instagram. Anyway, well, one day we're in the farmer's market, which is kind of where you go to see the stars. That's where everyone kind of hangs out. There's a mall next door and there's a proper farmer's market. And we're sitting there and we're, we're eating and she's just looking around at, at people. I'm like, what are, you, what are you looking for? I said, I said, you're looking for YouTubers, aren't you? And she said, yeah, I'm looking, looking for YouTubers. So I said to her, I said, how many YouTubers are you even going to recognize? I mean, you know, how, how, how big is this thing? And she's thinking about it. She said, I don't know, maybe 100, 150. I'm like, you recognize 100? And she said, yeah. So I said, how many wow. movie stars would you recognize? She's thinking about it. She said, uh, maybe like 10. And that was the first time it clicked for me that, and, and then we started talking about it. She watches these YouTubers for an hour every day, direct, one-on-one. -on -one, yeah, one -on -one. it's amazing. With her screen, she wow. watches the actor once every year for an hour or once every two years, right? So we, as slightly older people, think that we have this big connection with the movie stars and the singers and stuff, but we barely do. These kids that watch TikTok all day, every day, they feel really close with these people. They buy... The lipstick that Emma Chamberlain, I don't know if she promotes lipstick, but whatever she says, that's what they buy. They do. They buy it. It's a massive yeah. influence. So, so Christian, um, sorry, go ahead, America. I just think go that's ahead. a really long booking window. If you if you think about it that way, you know, someone following someone for, uh, being a child all the way to one day going right. to L.A. There's there's no way to track that conversion. There's no way. You just have to know you're putting it out there. Wow. Right. So Christian, what about um, you know, we were chatting a little bit earlier about, we all know short form video is, you know, hugely important, whether it's Instagram or YouTube shorts, TikTok, um, you know, people's attention span is practically non-existent these days. And the best way to reach them is through short form video. Okay. What are the OTAs doing about reaching you know people you using this using short form video i mean i haven't seen anything happening in that space really and i'm wondering what what is happening in that space that maybe i'm missing or if anybody you know i'd love to i'd love to know i wish i, I wish we had an audience on that could jump in and maybe give us some idea on that but i I've not seen anything happening there. And I feel like they are going to be really left behind if, especially if these platforms that you introduced earlier, Bruce, actually do have a way of buying or purchasing, you know, if there's a call to action that can, that can be 
you know, you can jump on somebody's platform that minute and buy, then unless the, that the OTA is the platform people are jumping on, they're going to miss out for sure. Yeah, we, we've had, as, as Magpie, we've had a couple of calls with this to, to try and come up with the, the next product page. And what we're, what we're saying is the next product page is going to be two 30 second videos. One is like an inspirational video and one is going to be the nuts and bolts. So starts out here and leaves at this time in duration. So the whole product page is going to be two 30 second videos or something. So we brought this group together to kind of create specs almost around what it should look like. The idea of doing that is to go to the OTAs and say, this is what we're recommending. Maybe we'll do it as part of Arcto. I'm not sure if it fits because I think what the OTAs have done, they, they struggle to get images, right? They struggle to get someone with an image that's big enough. You know, everyone's sending them 300 pixel images that are just junk. And yeah. they've been struggling with that for 20 years. They can't even get decent images. And I believe the real answer is nothing to your question, Laurie, as far as what are the OTAs doing with video today, whether it's short term, you know, probably short form, right? I mean, name an OTA that you can go and look at a product and see a video. Because I don't know, but I, I got to believe they're not doing nothing. I got to believe that there's happening in the marketing departments of these companies it, it, they're not it, they can't be just completely ignoring this and anyway sense? okay so maybe they can't get the product from uh the videos from the um operators so then they hire their own uh people to you know in their top 10 destinations and bring back some content i mean i i don't i don't think it's why which, is it complicated which you know, yeah, i've gone back to the we're gonna we're gonna wrap up in a few seconds but a few minutes but joe jebbia is it joe but the airbnb guy you know that story when they started and the first hosts were in new york and they flew to new york the, they were in a uh, incubator and they said they said go and talk to your customers in new york and they all had junk photos so they rented a camera they showed up and they took photos themselves yeah, right for airbnb and their conversion went up like 50 percent and all that Get you guy did that a few years ago with images. Maybe that's what they need to do for video. There's a business out there for the video company to contract with some OTAs and say, send us to cities. We'll take videos for you um, because I, you know, it's not the OTA's business. They need to do it, but to send videographers around the world, that doesn't sound like what they would do. But I could see service. They providers. don't need videographers. All they need to do is have people taking videos. I mean, they don't need videographers yeah my, my, my son he just just got a new position working for one of these video platforms he as we speak is on the golden gate bridge recording video to recruit other people to, to create video for their platform and it, yeah they're, they're not recruiting videographers that it's sometimes it's students sometimes it's tour companies it's anybody that can hold a phone straight and yeah I'll, an amateur videographer does that make you feel better Lori? yeah yes it does thank you bruce <laughs> I can talk forever, and if I and and I and I would, and I could talk about Mr. Beast and chat to you more, but we could save that. Any, anything else we need to um, we should cover in the news this week, or anything else you guys want to say? Thank you guys Not for having really. me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, America. It's great having you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mike. We should definitely get you on a future show as well and maybe talk about there's a there's a lot to discuss here. And we're kind of wrapping it all into one discussion, but it's pretty broad. We're talking video and social platforms and influencers. There's a lot, there's a lot of things going on, but we should definitely have you on again um, soon. Love to. Let's have all a part right. two. All right. Um, wrapping up for today. Thanks everybody for listening, and we'll um, see you next time. Next uh, next show is going to be our. I'm not sure if it's going to be live or not, but it's going to be our um, AI pitch show. So we're going to have a few companies come on. I think we've got four or five. They're going to come on and they're going to pitch their AI products for the travel industry. So that's going to be coming up very soon. So look forward to that. So see you guys all next time. Great. Good. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.